In this tutorial, we are going to implement user registration for React and it's going to register to Spring Boot and save the data to MySQL. So we still have our application. We have the list of products showing here. And now we are going to create a registration form. A user is going to enter his details and then he can register and be able to use those details to log in. Now we have the step-by-step -step here. So if you look at the steps, we have the step four. We are going to implement the user login and the procedure is also here, but I want us to actually take the fourth part, the last part, which is like the simpler or the easier part, implementing the registration and also the registration successful component because when a user successfully registered, he's directed to a successful registration successful component or message that displays. So let's go ahead to do this. It's going to be quite easy and also clear. So this is a normal application. Everything works like before. We have the details view, we have the edit, everything still works perfectly well. So let's go ahead now to create the registration form. So the step here says, create the registration component that will contain the following fields, okay? Uh, again, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. If this has been informative for you, please remember to subscribe so that you kind of motivate me to keep making this license. So let's go ahead to create the registration form. I'm going to the components directory and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it registration.js and I'm going to say RFC is going to be a functional component and this is going to be the registration form. Now the markup for this form is going to be using the material UI. So there's lots of HTML uh, tags and a lot of uh, material markup tags. So I've actually created this markup here. So simply click on this link on the link and just copy it and you can use it uh, in the render section of your component. So instead of returning this div, just return what we copied from that link, okay? So this is the registration component. Now we need to write the actual logic for this component. So let's begin by writing some logic here. Now we need to hold the form data. So we need a state to hold the form data. So I'm going to create this state. So it's going to be const and it's going to be form data, let me call it form data. And of course we need the setter for it, set form data. Set form data and it's going to be use state. And we are going to specify an initial state, right? We need an initial state, which is simply an empty form. So it's going to be first name, it's going to be nothing for first name, last name, and the same thing for everything. Okay, so this is a state that is going to hold the form data. We also need to hold the error that may occur. So I'm going to create another state, another um, uh, another um, variable to hold the, an error that may occur. So I'm going to call it error and actually set error. And it's also going to use states and we have an empty string. Then we also want to navigate to the registration successful component if this succeeds. So I'm going to use navigate so to navigate you have another hook called navigate so i need a, a state called navigate and it's going to be use navigate as well and it gets imported from react router dom which means you actually need to install react router dom as well okay so now when you submit this bot uh, you submit this form when you submit this form it gets submitted to uh, the endpoint where we have the register in the spring in spring boot but before we do that we like to create the change handler for the input fields so that when you enter data in the input fields you want to update the state when the user enters in the in the input field so i'm going to create the handle change function handle change now this handle change function is function that is executed for every change on any of the inputs. So you can see that we have the unchange for them, for this input field, and they all, all, they trigger the handle change event handler. Okay, so let's create it as an arrow function, and it receives the event. And what does it do? It's going to simply update the form data using the value of the 
field and it's going to update with the name of the field so so it's going to be like this we are going to use a setter function for the form data and we are going to use the spread operator to simply update the form data updating only what changed so it's going to be e dot target dot name e dot target dot name is going to receive e dot target dot value so we are going to update the form data based on the input that is entered in any of the input fields okay i think we are making progress so now we are going to go ahead to handle the submit right so when we submit we want to submit this form to the you to the endpoint that accepts this data and register the new user but before i do that i would like to create the registration successful component so if we go back this to the step by step um, i would like to create the registration successful component first so because i'm going to navigate to the registration successful component so it's better i just create it here so it's going to be registration successful.js and the registration successful.js is a component that simply displays you have successfully registered so there's actually nothing happening in that uh, component so i'm going to use a functional component and the markup for this is also provided here so i'm, I'm just going to copy everything uh, it's called registration success okay i'm going to copy everything and just Re replace this and i'm going to call this uh, registration success okay so again i would like to add before i continue i would like to add the routes for registration and registration success so i'm going to my base component and i'm going to add those two routes so i'm going to just copy this and paste it twice and use it for both the registration and the registration successful uh we have the registration so it's going to be registration and this is going to be registration successful and the element for first let me just save everything for the registration we are going to have registration and for the registration successful we are going to have registration success uh, maybe i just call it registration success right okay so we are going to have registration success, which is this one. Okay, that is fine. And of course, if you try to visit registration success, okay, we have a number of things. We are going to work on it uh, in registration. Yeah, we are going to fix that. Uh, let's just make sure this is all only coming from here. Okay, great. Okay, so let's continue. So we have a number of things like container, typography. We are going to import it just later on. Okay, so we have to handle the submit. So what happens in the submit? We are going to first, I'm going to start writing the function const handle submit. It's going to be an async function because it's going to be making a, um, a, um, an API call. So it's going to be an async request and it's going to receive the, tag, uh, the, the event, which is actually the form that triggered this um, this this function or this callback first we want to prevent the default behavior so we are going to just say prevent default because we don't want it to submit immediately we want to actually uh, perform some checks before we submit okay so we are going to check whether the password and the confirm password match so i'm going to say if from data the password if it's not equal to the form data dot confirm password in this case the password does not match so we are going to set the error message that's going to be displayed to the user so it's going to be passwords does not match okay or passwords do not match right so which of the english um <laughs> so we now have to return in this case we don't go ahead with anything we simply exit from this function we uh, clear the error message so we set the error to nothing because this sub uh, this submission have failed okay so assuming everything is fine uh, we are going to now proceed to try to make the call the api call so i'm going to start with a try block we are going to now make the call uh, to the 
API endpoint. So it's going to be const to the uh, response. We're going to expect the response to be coming from. We are going to use Axios and we are going to specify the location is going to be HTTP. If I can remember, it should be localhost at port 8080 and it's going to be the register endpoint and we are going to pass in the form data okay now the response comes back right if the response is the correct response in this case if the status is 201 201 it means that this user has been registered successfully so i'm going to check if the response code uh, is 201 so i'm going to say if the response the status response or status holds the status code 201 and it's actually not a string but a number if this is the case we are going to then navigate we are going to navigate to slash registration success if i remember what we called it let's just check registration success right here so i'm going to do a copy and paste so i don't have any problems Okay, so if this is the case, we navigate to uh, registration success else. It means something went wrong. So we are going to display the error message const error text is equal to await. We want to get the error message coming from the server response.text. Okay, and we are going to simply set the error to be error text okay so this is the case where we have uh, either successful registration or not successful registration but there was a response that comes in however if any other error occurs we are going to cache that as well we are going to cache that error as an error and we are going to also set the error we don't know in this case what this error may be so i'm, I'm going to just say an error occurred during registration okay so this is basically the workflow um, there are a number of things we need to import for instance the container typography i think i can just go to product and look for those things and just import it they are coming from material ui so i'm going to copy this from product and i'm going to use it in registration so here in registration i'm going to paste this uh, to import all those so we have typography we have box we have container we have grid so okay so what else do we mix we have text fields okay we have text field so we have text field let's just check around i think everything should be fine so i'm going to save everything and there is no error anymore okay so i think we are good to be able to test this uh uh, registration so i'm going to go back just to make sure everything still works but now we don't have the registration um link so i'm thinking we have to add the registration link here by the way if we just try to go to registration uh register i think let's see we call it uh let's see um we call it regist registration that's what we call it so let's try to go to registration so I'm going to go to registration and we see that we have the registration right here. But I'd like to add a registration button um, somewhere here, around here, next to logout so that we can actually just click on it to go to registration form. So I'm going to go to the base component, which is the app component or the, sorry, the app bar, this app bar, and you can see the logout here. So I'm going to use an anchor tag for A and I'm going to do the href to B slash registration and I'm going to just call it register and let's try to see what we have. So first I'm going to just go back home and we are going to click on register to see we, we get to register, right? Um, let me also check for it, registration success because I don't want to have error uh, later on. So is it registration successful or registration success? Let's just check. Um, going back to the app. So it's registration success. Let's try to see because I want to have the correct error message 
uh, the correct uh, uh, success message. Okay, there's a success page, everything is fine. So let's go ahead to try to register a new user. Before I do that, I would like us to open the MySQL database just to make sure that we are seeing the database we are working with is the product DB. And in product DB, we have a user. If I go to user, we have one user here. So this is the user we currently use to log in, right? This is the current user we have, and we use this user to log in, right? Okay, so this is the user we actually specified in our environment file. So if you go to the environment file, uh, you see this current user right here. Okay, so let's go ahead to go to try to do a registration. Let's go back to the, to the list and let's go to register. So let me start registering a new user. Let's call this user Jaden Mills and username is Hercules and password I enter just a simple password and I'm going to click on register and it says an error occurred during registration. I'm going to open my console to check what this error might be. Uh, filled with 401. Okay, so let's check uh, let's check the method we used in the post request. So we have await axios, right? So we actually should do axios dot post, right? So it's not just await axios, axios dot post. Sorry for that. So let's go ahead to try one more time. So I'm going to save everything, and I'm going back here. I'm going to refresh the page. Let me start again Jaden Mills and username is Hercules and password is 24 and I'm going to click on register and now it says you have successfully registered you can now log in but now we don't have the login component yet if we go back to our um, database if i refresh now you can see we have this user right here and we succeeded in creating a user using a registration form and at this point we can click on go back to login so this is basically how to register a user i can also recommend you maybe try to clean up this form to add some design if you want in the next part we now have to work on the login workflow to be able to actually use this user registered to actually log in a user because what we currently do here is to have this in the environment file and we are reading it from this hard coded uh, values here but we are not going to do this we are actually going to use the login workflow to actually log in a user and save the data in either cookies local storage or session storage so this is a workflow just in case you want to see how it looks like this is understanding react spring boot authentication workflow this is how it looks like so where are we we've been able to do registration form register registration success page all the way up to number three or part three right here so in the next part we now continue from the user login I would like to thank you for viewing. I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you don't miss any updates from me. And we continue in the next part.